a cultural phenomenon when it first aired between 1994 and 2004. There had never been a sitcom quite like Friends. The series featured six, well, friends living and loving in New York, but it didn't always produce timeless comedy gold. These are the Friends moments that make us cringe today. For sitcom fans working their way through every episode of Friends and haven't finished yet, spoiler alert, Monica winds up with Chandler. But before that crucial pairing is locked down, Monica dates a lot of guys, the way a woman in her 20s is wont to do. One of her boyfriends is Ethan, a guy that seems younger than Monica. How much younger? Well, he tells Monica that he's a senior, which she takes to mean senior in college. Ethan also reveals that he's a virgin, but after they sleep together for the first time, as in the actual first time, he admits that he's not a senior in college, but a senior in high school. You know, you shouldn't even be here, it's a school night! <laughs> having participated in an encounter that would make her, as Monica says, a felon in 48 states, it's not surprising that the official title of this episode is The One with the Ick Factor. While it takes place in the Big Apple, the situations explored on Friends are genuinely innocuous and between the friends themselves. The six pals deal with awkward romantic situations, unfulfilling work prospects, and their interactions with one another. But on the rare occasion that the Central Perk crew does interfere with someone not in their little clique, the results can be disastrous. For example, there's the episode where Monica dates a gregarious guy named Fun Bobby. Everyone loves the guy, but then they realize that the reason Fun Bobby is so much fun is because because he's a heavy drinker, if not an alcoholic. The good news, Fun Bobby quits drinking. The bad news, without booze to fuel him, he becomes extremely boring and Chandler rebrands him as Ridiculously Dull Bobby. All of this leads to the episode's central dilemma. I mean, I can't break up with him. I'm the one who made him quit drinking. He's dull because of me. Monica packs a bunch of booze for a weekend trip with Bobby to anesthetize herself against what looks like to be an incredibly boring time, only for him to dump her in order to focus on his recovery. So, basically, the gang spends an entire episode mocking an alcoholic who tries to get sober. Of course, this nastiness is all relative. It seems strange on a squeaky clean series like Friends, but on a more edgy show, the jokes about alcohol would be easier to swallow. Chandler is famously awkward with women, but in one episode he goes over the top by subjecting an emotionally vulnerable woman to some elaborate manipulation and trickery. Oh come on, I can never get a girl like that with conventional methods. After receiving an answering machine message from a woman named Jade, who's looking to reconnect with a guy named Bob, Chandler picks up the phone and pretends to be the man in question. Jade mentions that she's an aerobic instructor and a leg model. Chandler, still acting like Bob, asks her to meet him at his favorite cafe. His plan is to lurk in the background and offer comfort to Jade when Bob doesn't show up. Of course, this is all despicable. And to his credit, Ross calls Chandler's ploy pure evil. Indeed, the meeting goes according to plan. Chandler spots Jade at Central Perk looking sad and swoops in. Later, back at his apartment, Chandler proudly tells Ross that he had just bedded Jade and describes his performance as awesome. Then the phone rings, Chandler answers as Bob. Jade tells him off for standing her up and confesses that she met someone else. But the new guy is nothing compared to him. Chandler is humiliated, which is hardly enough punishment for his extremely creepy behavior. One of the best parts about having a circle of friends are the inside jokes. And one of the best parts of city living is observing and interacting with its many quirky characters. Those two concepts perfectly converge in one of the friends' best remembered running jokes, the saga of Ugly Naked Guy. As friends ran on network TV, viewers never actually saw a full image of Ugly Naked Guy. Rather, he lives in a building across the way from Monica and Rachel's apartment, and the whole group can't help but gather at the window to see what the unattractive, un clove man is getting up to. Ew, 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 ew. What? Ugly naked guy got a thigh master. <laughs> Granted, the guy apparently doesn't use curtains, but it's his business to do what he wants to do in the privacy of his own home. Yet, for some reason, six conventionally good-looking people get their kicks by mocking him and, in one instance, poking his body with a giant stick. So, in a bunch of episodes across many seasons, the Central Perk gang are essentially peeping toms and smug bullies all rolled into one. And they seem so sweet. You haven't seen him in so long! Oh, God, I really miss that fat bastard! <sighs> 
Up until the last five years or so, gender bending was, unfortunately, an acceptable and common source of humor in mainstream entertainment. The 90s and early 2000s were the stone age as far as sensitivity to gender and sexual identity went. And Friends had some moments that seem, in retrospect, extraordinarily insensitive. The parents of Matthew Perry's Chandler divorced when he was young. In part because his father, Charles Bing, had a same-sex affair with the pool boy and embarked on a life as a gay man. Later in the series, Chandler discusses his dad's personal life with Monica and delivers a number of jokes that feel uncomfortably outdated today. He had sex with Mr. Garibaldi. Who's Mr. Garibaldi? Does it matter? After years of estrangement, Chandler decides to reconnect with his father, now performing in a Las Vegas drag review under the stage name Helena Handbasket. And who starred as Chandler's father, the deep-voiced female actor Kathleen Turner, who later talked to the Gay Times about Friends and some of its depictions of queer and trans people. Turner told the magazine, I don't think it's aged well. This statement is especially true concerning the two Friends episodes that focus on Monica and Chandler's wedding, where some of the guests couldn't help but comment about the groom's father. What? I've never seen one before. Yeah, there's Ross. Why don't you go talk to him? Oh. I didn't even have a chance to act as though I'm okay with it. Friends, one could argue, is really the story of Rachel. In the show's initial episode, she flees her wedding and gets her first job as a waitress at Central Perk. By the end of season 10, she's advanced so far in the world of fashion that Louis Vuitton offers her a great job in Paris. That's a happy ending for Rachel, but one that doesn't resolve her feelings for Ross. As Rachel boards her flight to Paris, Ross realizes that he's finally ready to commit. Then, surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, she shows up at his door, revealing that she got off the plane. Basically, Rachel gives up her dream job for what looks to be more relationship drama with Ross. That's not exactly a woke decision from today's perspective, especially since Ross could have been more supportive and moved to Europe with her. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.